Well, this is just gonna be a short video, I guess, on our caravan, uh, on the most asked question that we got while we were traveling down south, and that is how we run 240 volt off grid, how we power our toasted sandwich maker, electric blankets was a big one, and air fryer, um, that was another one. So everything about our off-grid little system, how we did it, uh, a rough price on how much it cost, and if you can do it yourself, which you definitely can, you have to get an electrician involved for the hard wiring, but you can definitely get it done yourself. Anyway, like I say, this is gonna be a short video as by the time this video goes up and live, I'm probably on my way to the UK. But let's get inside and I guess turn the aircon on. So just before everyone asks as well, this is completely off grid, not connected to any power at all. So in our first little caravan, the little gold stream popped up. Uh, when we were sort of building that and getting into it the first time, Sosha's biggest request was to have 240 volt power for a hair straightener and a hair dryer, which I couldn't really argue with that. It was the only thing she wanted. Uh, so I needed an inverter and our first little inverter was a King's 1500 watt inverter, which was bloody great. We did manage to run it well, pretty easily. We didn't have to hardwire. It was just a simple extension cord into the inverter outside and round into the caravan plug. I also threw an Amphibian little RCD breaker. Um, not the, the best sort of way to do it, but it's still doable. Um, managed to work for us perfectly. We went near on halfway around Australia with it and it was bloody great. But in this caravan we've realised that we need to sort of up the ante um, and try and go something bigger and get it hardwired professionally done. And having it done professionally comes with a pretty big price tag, pretty hefty price tag, which don't get me wrong it's definitely worth it. They know what they're doing, they do a really clean job but some of these quotes were, well, they were, they were ranging from six grand to up to around 11 grand for a full off-grid system. Uh, that's including solar and that's not including your batteries, which is, that's a lot of money. That's a big whack. And that's especially a big whack for us. We we're planning to head off on our Southwest trip. Uh, and it was sort of a last minute thing to get the inverter all done, try and get it done properly and that was nearly all of our budget gone and we wouldn't be able to travel. So push come to shove, I had to sort of DIY it myself, which turned out really good. A lot cheaper than some of those prices there and it's worked perfectly. The only little problem we do have is recharging the battery, which is the solar system. Uh, we just haven't got to that as of yet. We've managed to make it work, but that is coming in the new year. So I guess let's have a look at the little system that we've put in here. Uh, it is running the aircon perfectly. 20 degrees on a nice 40 degree day in the Midwest here. So it's working perfectly. And I do want to note as well, we don't use the aircon that often. Uh, we barely ever use it to be honest, as it does use a lot of power. We have only got a small bank of one batteries. So it's not even a bank of batteries. And we haven't got much solar at all. We, uh, like I say, we have run into that problem with solar. You would have seen it in the past couple of videos but this barely ever gets used. The main things that we use on 240 are the microwave, the air fryer. I've no idea where Sosha's hidden it, but a little toasty machine, toasted sandwich maker goes here, which we do use to cook everything sort of on that thing. Loaded chicken, patties, whatever you need to cook, cooks really well on a little toasted sandwich maker. And then the biggest thing that we do run are the electric blankets on this, simply because we haven't got a diesel heater. It is in the mail. I was hoping for it to arrive before I leave to the UK, but that's gonna have to be a new year job. 
Now everything that we've done is hidden under here. I'm not an electrician, I'm not an auto sparky. This is all sort of DIY job done here, which you can do yourself. You do have to get an electrician to run your hardwire, sorry, to hardwire your inverter into RCD slash RVDs, which we've done. But everything else, 12 volt side, has all been done by myself. That's why it does sort of, doesn't look that professional. It is all run with Anderson plugs. It is all sort of fused and done properly. It just doesn't look that neat. Maybe if I spent a day cleaning it all up, running it all right, it'd look bloody good. But anyway, the inverter we run, a 3000 watt Renergy inverter charger, uh, bloody good bit of kit. We've only had a couple little problems with it and that was sort of with dirty power from caravan parks. Um, it is a UPS, so it does take whatever power it can't get out of the battery to get the full 240 volts. So that works really well there, but it just does beep and we can't turn that beep off. Um, don't know how, don't really know what's going on. That is only when we have dirty power, which has only happened once or twice, I believe. Being an inverter charger, it gives us the 240 voltage that we need to run all our appliances and the aircon there. And it also charges the battery at a maximum of 75 amp hour, I believe. So if I scroll through the settings here, you can see it's putting out 240 volts. Outputting one kilowatt. So that gives me a pretty good idea of how much that air conditioner is sucking out of the system, just while trying to get down to temperature, which also I guess gives me another idea of how much solar I need to run that air con. So this Renergy 3000 watt inverter charger, uh, I'd like to say it was around 799. Um, I'll leave it below there, whatever it was. It was 750 or 799, but somewhere around there. And you do have to get a Sparky, qualified Sparky to install this as it is 240 volt. Um, another thing I wanna say is the reason why we did go the 3000 watt, the biggest, is simply to not have to muck around in the future and not really replace anything. We didn't originally plan to run the air conditioner, but talking to a load of different people, they say you go the biggest that you can to save reinstalling everything again, pulling it out, putting new stuff in, getting a sparky back around, just go for the biggest that you can get and do it once. So that's what we did. Now the biggest money under here would have to be the battery. We have only got the one battery, but it is a bloody big battery. It is a 280 amp hour Scout lithium battery by Power Paul. Uh, love it, absolutely love it. You don't have to go that big at all. We simply went that big because it was $2,000 for that, which I thought was a pretty good price for 280 amp hour lithium hand built. And like I say, we originally didn't plan to run the air conditioner off this battery. It's just sort of come around that it actually works. Um, realistically, you probably need another one of these batteries to actually use the air conditioning for an extended period. I think we can get around two and a half hours of the air conditioner with this and we're close to fully dead then on the battery. But if you're in the market for a battery, I highly recommend Power Paul's batteries. He's a bloody helpful bloke, uh, goes through everything with you and he makes a bloody decent battery. And when you compare the price per capacity, they turn out to be pretty cheap. But looking at this wiring is starting to give me an itch. I do need to get some ducting or something and run that wiring a lot nicer. But like I say, I'm not a Sparky. I'm not an auto electrician. It is all Anderson plug, it is all fused. It is all sort of done properly. It's just not neat. But anyway, onto the next little thing we've got under here, and that is the solar charger. I love Victron gear. It's just bloody awesome mounts really well the little apps done really well you can see what's coming in what's going out all the little small details of Victron and that's what you pay for with Victron uh, as you can see it's only a 15 amp controller it is coming out it's not even plugged into the panels at the top I'm starting to pull it out now but beautiful bit of gear and it will be replaced by I'm hoping a 50 amp controller and a couple more solar panels on the roof that is a job for the new year uh, four or five solar panels and a big 50 amp controller to 
hopefully be able to power that. What else have I got? All right, we've got the, down there right next to the battery is the battery monitor. Another Victron bit of gear. Um, a handy little app. I'll try and drop in a clip of that little battery monitor running. It is Bluetooth and it tells you what's coming in, what's going out, how much the aircon is drawing. Um, just a, a bloody awesome bit of kit. Like I keep saying, Victron is, it's nice gear. Expensive gear, but it's really, really nice gear. The other thing we've got going on down here is this thing here, which is a last minute upgrade for our caravan. This was actually done on the road. We had to pick this up in Bunbury, but it's our DC DC charger. Um, I'd love to upgrade it to another Victron one, but we had to pick that up as we found out that the caravan wasn't charging from the, the car while we were traveling. It, we were purely off solar and only having 200 watts of solar just didn't really cut it. So we had to get that on the road and fit that. And that was the only one that we found, the J-Car Special. I think it was about 200 bucks for that. But that's about it. That's about all we run down here. This is the caravan, the brains of the caravan, runs all the lights, runs everything, so I'm not gonna go into that. But that's about it for our off-grid system, apart from the solar. So not everyone's gonna be such a huge power user like we are. Not everyone's gonna want a 3000 watt off-grid system hardwired in there. Uh, you're not gonna to wanna to pay for the Sparky to come out and do it. And that's where these little systems come into it. This is an EcoFlow River portable power station. Um, this is it. It's essentially a battery and an inverter built into a little box with a couple of plugs on the front. A couple on the side there. And the inverter built in here, which I didn't really think that much of until seeing a couple of mates get caravans now. And I think these will come in really handy when you haven't got an inverter hardwired. Now this one being one of the smallest at 600 watts, it's not going to power a lot, but it is managing to power our toasty machine. There it goes, this fans have just kicked on there. But I believe they do make all the way up to 1800 watts, which is a big old whack. Uh, I look forward to trying this out in the new year, going camping or something, but I think this is a really handy bit of kit for a caravaner that hasn't got an inbuilt inverter. So I'll get to test this out a lot more in the new year, hopefully go for a couple of little camping trips with it and test it out. But in my opinion, talking to a couple of mates that haven't got inverters hardwired into their caravan, or haven't even got inverters, these could be a bit of a game changer for caravanners and campers, as you can simply throw it in the back of your car, uh, plug it into your caravan, whatever you need in the caravan, plug it into whatever you need on your camp spot. So a couple of ways to charge this thing back up. I think the main way to charge this back up and the best way it's going to be chucking this in the back of your car, always plugged in in the back of your car. Whenever you need it, you just grab it out of the car. Day trips, charge it back up. But it also offers solar power on the side here. So if you're sitting around camp somewhere, just plug it into the solar. You can still use it while the solar is incoming, which is a pretty handy little feature. So we'll get to test this out a little bit more in the new year with a couple of camping trips and back in the caravan, I guess, but a handy little bit of kit here, I think, for caravan and campers. Well, not just caravan and campers, anyone really. You can chuck this in the back of your car. You've got yourself a little generator. Anyway, onto the solar. So, solar panels for our caravan. This is it. This is all that we had on our caravan and this is why we were running low on power a lot of the time. That and the horrible weather also not having the DC DC to start with, bit us in the bum pretty quickly. We had to get that DC DC just to get some sort of power back into the caravan to recharge the batteries while we're driving, as we only had these two powering the caravan. Now this one did come with a caravan, 120 watt. hundred and twenty watt solar panel so not that big at all now this one here has followed me around for a while now it used to be on top of the car down there and we then put it on the top of this caravan to add to that 120 watt 
but this is an eBay 250 watt panel and bloody good little panel that one. I think I paid a hundred bucks for it and it did really well. But these were in series on top of the caravan, giving me 15 amps through that little MPPT controller. So maxing that out and doing a really good job there, but just not big enough to run the aircon to recharge the battery fully with rough weather. So the reason that we've got these down here, uh, in the new year, we're gonna be replacing these. With something a little bit bigger and a lot more uniform size wise and something that can power a lot more in the caravan. Well, recharge those batteries a lot quicker. So they'll be getting replaced and the solar controller inside, but that'll be in the new year and probably a dedicated video on that one. But I think that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, that's just a quick little rundown on our solar system and battery system, inverter, off-grid sort of system that we run in this. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've got a flight to catch. We'll see you on the next one, hopefully somewhere heading to England.